makers themselves are dreaming of changing almost everything. Know the feeling? Like here in San Francisco. Many of us enjoy it every day. Even here in Detroit, the heart of the auto industry, it can be slow going. For millions, the love affair with the car is becoming more like an abusive relationship. 86% of Americans commute to work and spend 42 hours a year in traffic jams. A waste of time and money. Traffic delays cost the average commuter $960 a year. And it's the last mile that causes most stress and pollution. That's why Danielle uses her phone to get to work. These are all the numbers that we can call. So a minute away, that bus is full. Right. And then there's another one that's nine minutes away. Calling a shuttle in San Francisco that works like Uber. It's called Chariot. How much would it cost you to do this in a car? It's probably like 25 to $35 a day. A day? Mm-hmm, to park downtown. Hello. This ride costs Hi. about $2.50. It's flexible, and you can customize your journey with like-minded people, for instance. This is like the high school bus for grown-ups. <laughs> yes, kind of. <laughs> not a perfect solution. The shovel doesn't always stop right at your destination. Before we reach Danielle's office, we're caught in the rain. But it's got many exciting. We can actually crowdsource a new route between, let's say, a Caltrain station and some other part of town. Ford has invested in this startup and wants to go worldwide to help make the last mile less stressful. And here in Detroit, where it began making the Model T more than a hundred years ago, this is about changing how the world moves again. Ford agreed to show us another idea. It's only a prototype, but in the future, you could travel the last mile to work on this electric scooter, unfolded from your trunk. Am I really gonna get out of my car, which I love, which has my music, which is climate controlled, with, and get on one of these, though? You get out in the fresh air, right. and you, you have your car for the things you need, like taking your kids to school, right. going shopping, an app on my phone attached to the scooter here will actually tell me where my car is parked. Professor Robert Hampshire commutes in Dearborn. Is the love affair with the car over? Oh, no, absolutely not. It's not a divorce. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not even a separation. But, he says, huge changes will be needed to cars, roads, and attitudes. The highways are jam-packed. You just can't fit any more cars. Millennials now, research shows that they don't put as much cultural capital on owning a vehicle. It's a golden age for new ideas. Here we go, into the future. Indeed. In the UK, inventors are testing a driverless vehicle. <laughs> no hands. That can be called on your smartphone and drives on the sidewalk to help with the last mile. There's a the rule of the baby. Yep. And then mm -hmm. does it stop it? I'm going to be able to park my car, get in one of these, take the last mile to the office, Maybe it will have my radio station from my car pre-programmed in the vehicle yep. here. The designers say it will not hurt pedestrians, even reckless ones. Now the ultimate test. <laughs> Around the world, the race is on for solutions. In China, a bus that drives over traffic. And who knows, if Elon Musk has his way. The world that wants something new. We may soon be traveling in a pod like this the speed of sound. In the future, car manufacturers say your car will be a mobile office driving you to work while you work, even finding parking for you. With all that saved time, Hoda, you can take another shower. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, yeah, I was kind of worried about you stepping out in front of that car. Are you right. nuts? Like, they were worried about it too, yeah. because it's a heavy vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? That got a little close here. Yeah. 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 Well, you know. <laughs> Good to have you here in the States. Uh -huh. Tamron has moved back over to the Army.